everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ye Wandi and this is Yanni London. Do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. So in today's video it will be the part one um, in showing you of how I made my bed. So as you can just see in the beginning of the video I am just showing you the colour and chest of drawers. This is what I'm going to use as the base of my bed, at least one section of it. How I'm just constructing um, it. Bear in mind this was all over a year ago so I may I do not have all of the footage um, well not all of the footage, I didn't record everything of how I was making the bed at the time I wasn't too sure of what I was doing so this was like a trial and error type of thing but the footage that I do have, I have put in here for you to see so here I am, I'm just making the drawers to go inside um, the chest of drawers this bit was a bit tricky but if you follow the instructions you should be fine and there's like loads of tutorials online of people putting together the IKEA furniture so at this point, I have designed my bedroom on SketchUp. This is just to make it easier as I don't have any other footage as I didn't record the rest of me making my bed. So here's just like a little 360 of the chest of drawers and where I was going to place them. I've only done the SketchUp design like after the making of the bed. As I said, this was done over a year ago and I'm still sleeping in this bed and I love it. It's great for storage. So this design was done after. So at this point, I am I have put together the B and Q. I think it's a deep wall cabinet or a base cabinet. I'm not too sure, but I'll clarify that in the description. So I've built that cabinet, and that will go next to the Cullen chest of drawers. This um this cabinet from B and Q, I had to cut it down by one centimeter, as the Cullen chest of drawers they are seventy centimeters high. <laughs> And the cabinet was 71 centimetres high. So I had to cut it down by one centimetre and pre redraw all the holes. And then I, um, where the cursor is now, I'm circling that because that's where I screwed it into the chest of drawers that are next to it. That's just to keep it in place, essentially. I'm just turning it, showing you where I have just put the chest of drawers. I, I'm going to move it slightly further so that it's um, matching where the drawers actually are because it's slightly behind, but I'll show you that later. And there, and then here I have cut four pieces of wood. This is to keep up the, the frame that I will come a bit later that I'll show you. And this little inde indent event here where the cursor is that's like another way that you could have done it I didn't actually do it this way the other two legs at the other end of the bed are how I actually secured the frame to the legs but this would be another way it would be a lot harder to do that if you didn't have like the proper tools but I think it would have looked a lot, a lot neater not that you would actually see it because you don't see it when you're like on my bed that's hidden anyway and the height of the legs that I use they are 90 centimeters high by 40 centimeters um, in width or depth and that is the size of the legs that I used in all four corners. Uh, this side that has two legs, the second shorter leg, that is where the bed will rest upon. So that will probably be explained a bit better later but that's where the bed will rest upon because um, I'm going to be using Ottoman hinges, that's just for like foot or whatnot or even beds which I'm using it for. So that's the bit that it will rest upon. So here I have just inserted the bed frame. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Oh, okay, um, yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier. This is where I'm going to move the cabinet slightly forward as, um, it's, as you can see, it's not sitting in line with the frame. So I moved it forward and then screwed, re well, I didn't, did I do it at that point? Yeah, anyway, I moved it forward and then just um, scrolled through, screwed through, and secured it to the chest of drawers. Oh, it's so hot in my room right now. I need to open the window, but it's winter, and, like, nobody's trying to lose that heat. Okay, so I've moved that forward. Here's me just showing you the legs, higher up angle. And with the, um, with the frame that I've just put in, um, a long each side I glued it together before I used screws to secure it 
so I glued the side where the cursor is that I'm just running along now I did that in all four corners I'm just circling that now for you I then went on to stagger the screw holes so in each corner I screwed um, two on one side and then one on the other directly into the into the legs that would be holding up the bed frame the reason that um, this panel is so high um, the width of the frame that I've put in is to accommodate the ottoman hinges I've when um, the hinges were folded I measured the height of it and I left an allowance for the thickness of my bed frame that would be in the, on the inside of it so that's why the board is so thick. And here I am just showing you the other way that it could have been done if I had, um, like, what would be the name? Maybe like rooted it out, but that's too, that's too deep for a router. If I just cut out those sections, I could have it flush with the leg and then just screwed that in. Here I have another tiny um, piece of wood and that is placed upon the wall cabinet and the chest of drawers. That is for the other side so that the, when the bed frame is down that's what it will rest upon. Just as um, the shorter leg on the opposite side would be used for. They're in slightly different locations because I didn't want to rest it on the top of the, um, the slim cabinet from B&Q because it wouldn't make sense. There's not enough support there. Yeah, I just screw that into the bed frame. And um, the frame that I actually used was for my old wardrobe. And I used a jigsaw to cut it. But you could get this wood for the bed frame cut from B&Q. So here I am just showing you um, a little 360 of the frame. Um, so the, the actual bed frame that I used was from my old bed. And I just cut the planks down slightly narrower. As that space was 75 centimetres. And here I'm just showing you the ottoman hinges. I screwed it in like four different places. And then also the plank, I screwed that to the wall. And this just goes, that went beneath the bed frame. Um, so when I was doing this bit, I wasn't too sure what I was actually doing in um, how I would actually put the ottoman hinge and the bed on but I climbed into that little crawl space the little empty space behind the chest of drawers and um, I marked out where the holes would sit and then I literally just screwed it in and it worked fine but at the time I wasn't too sure if it would actually work because I couldn't put the piston hinge onto the onto the actual hinge whilst I was whilst I was um, whilst I was screwing it on because I wouldn't be able to pull it back down so I wasn't too sure if that would work so once I'd screwed it on I just put the piston hinge back on. And there's just a little spin of it. Yeah so that's it done. So here is my bed up close and personal. So it looks like I cut this bit using a jigsaw and it was literally my first time ever so that's why it's not straight whatsoever it looks good from a distance though and i left that little gap so that i could pass an extension lead through as the only plug sockets in my room are literally right behind the bed in the middle of the wall so that was peak so one came around through here and the other one is just there it's just on my bed at the moment i normally keep it on my desk yeah, that plank that I used there, that was from my old wardrobe, which was orange. Well, not orange, it was an orangey brown. And this is my, well, look, more marble because I love it. Yeah, that is my, yeah, this is my bed. If I showed you the rest of my room now, it's a madness because I had to move my desk and everything out of the way. But it's cute or whatever.